the kids need to be doing something every day. I mean, even if it's 20 minutes. So, but then the other one is the parents who tell me that their nine-year-old isn't begging them to practice, so they're not gonna push their kid to go out. And I don't know about you guys, there are some kids that are the 1% of kids that will beg their parents or they'll go out on their own, but a lot of kids won't. My parents had to make me go out and practice. And I always tell them, as long as they're not complaining while they're out practicing, like, of course, when it was 100 degrees in July, I wanted to sit on my couch after school in the air conditioning. I didn't want to go practice. My parents made me. So when these parents are like, my nine-year-old is begging me to practice, I try to remember, to remind them they're kids. Of course, they want to do other things, but if you see potential in them, you need to push them. Hello, and welcome to Catching You, a dad and daughter softball journey. I'm Rusty, a dad who's been in the dugout and on the sidelines. And I'm Lacey, the daughter whose journey through softball has been filled with incredible wins, tough losses, and so many lessons both on and off the field. For the past 16 years, we've navigated the highs and lows of softball together, from the local fields to national tournaments and everything in between. From the challenges of recruitment during COVID to the mental and emotional roller coaster that comes with being a student athlete, we'll be sharing the perspectives of both a parent and athlete and firsthand experience of the impact of sports on mental health and the importance of support from the sidelines. Welcome back, everybody, to Catching You. I'm your co-host, Rusty Ham. I'm with my daughter, co other other co-host, Lacey Ham. Lacey, hi. Hi, everyone. And we have our first guest appearance, Coach Kate. Coach Kate was Lacey's very first pitching coach. I say hi, Kate. How are you? I am good. So, Kate, we're just, we are, again, this, this podcast is about, you know, Lacey and myself as a father, uh, our journey through her softball career. And just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, like maybe where you grew up. You know, what colleges or what high school did you do attend? What college did you attend? And, you know, what are you doing now as far as, uh, you know, something, what, what are you doing now that's related to softball? Okay. I'm Kate Gaskill or I'm Kate Tiffany now because I got married two years ago, but, um, I played at Marietta Valley girls softball growing up. And I think Lacey was there too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I heard right. Yeah. And then I, um, High school, I played for Merida Valley for two years, and then I transferred to Vista Marietta High School, which was fun. And then I, uh, I don't know, I've been on a lot of different travel ball teams, Bapisters. Uh, I know, Kate Gordon Panthers. I forget the other questions. Um, I went to University of Georgia, yeah. and I was there a couple years, and I transferred to Georgia State my last year, and I ended up coming home, but... Now I am coaching full time and I, I think uh, it was meant to be. I love coaching so much. So this is like what I should have been doing from, you know, forever. I couldn't coach in college like they can now, but, you know, I had to wait until I was out of college, but the best thing ever, the best job I could ever have. <laughs> yeah. At least you're getting into that, right? You're starting to coach some, some girls and maybe you. I think you might have some questions regarding that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you were at GSA, right? So was Lacey. You went to our rival school, Marietta Valley, Night oh, Act. I coached on Mesa too. I forgot to mention That's that. right. You were a coach at Mesa. Mm -hmm. um, when you transferred to Vista, did you play with the Romero sisters or no? No, they're younger. I'm old. Their oh. dad is the assistant coach. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Need, yeah. But rest, I rest will say... Peace. Those girls, yes. Um, those girls are, obviously, we know how great they are. But I remember playing varsity softball, and they were really young, and their dad would have them come out and do fielding with us. And we're like, what are these little kids doing practicing with us? But they were so good, obviously. I <laughs> mean, they were good from a young age. It's crazy. So I didn't yeah, right. but I kind of, like, practiced with them. That's cool. Um, yeah, so thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, we're just going to, you know, have just a, just a random conversation about, you know, uh, you know, when the girls are young and how to treat them. And, you know, I think Lace, you have some questions uh, regarding that. And then I'll ask you some parent questions, right? Um, you know, cause, uh, if you've listened to some of the episodes, I was after you, okay. Um, and when she started, yeah, she started like you know, practicing a lot. I, I was not, I was not a good father. I was throwing the ball back as hard as I could to her. And I was moping and, you know, hate your spots lace, you know? So, 
I didn't do a very good job as far as a parent until she came to me crying <laughs> one day. Um, and then maybe you can touch upon the parent aspect. Lace, what, uh, I don't know. Would you have any memories of, of coach Kate? I know it's super, you were super young. How old were you again? Uh, seven, eight. I, like, I sent you pictures. I feel like yeah. there's a little, there's, there's like, she sent me a video of me and like, uh, socks with like fire on them from sweet heat. Yeah. And, um, uh, like my untucked shirt, my visor and my hair's down. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just remember pitching sunglasses. sunglasses. Uh, we pitched in the really crappy bullpen at Mesa, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, very, very young. So I just re remember working on mechanics a lot. That's pretty much the basis. Lacey, you didn't know this, but uh, like you were one of her first clients other than Autumn Pete. <laughs> really? <laughs> you, was it one lesson you said? Yeah, like I think it was like one lesson. My mom knew her mom from work or something. Right. You know, kind of similar with Lacey. I mean, right? Isn't that how it happened? Yep, from we knew. Yep. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, I, I was teaching at Mesa right at the time. <laughs> yep. Um, well, let, let, let me get started. Let, so what your full time coach now, um, you didn't really necessarily have a, like a business name. What is it? What is your, what's the business name? What's it called? What? 360 softball. Yeah. So what did define, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean to you or why, why, how did you come up with 360 softball? So I came up with that with the, to grow so the end game goal is to have 360 everything available for these girls like to have a family community where they can have hitting pitching fielding mental game work uh i even i've brought in a nutritionist school tutoring like my dream is to have everything under one roof 360 everything so the girls can come hang out get work in do school work and you know i want them to not want to leave i want them to softball all the time you know right so that that was that's the plan and i'm slowly getting there yeah you just didn't you just put in like bullpens and and like man that looked like a lot of work <laughs> oh well yeah i'm uh still working on it my father father-in-law's down there working on it right now oh really lots of money and lots of time i i mean i made big moves i sold my first house to buy this land just for softball for my business so it's pretty crazy yeah, I was, I was looking at some of the pictures. I'm like, yeah, that, that's a huge chart. <laughs> I don't know if it's back here. It's just, <laughs> one half acres. Is it still in the area, like Marietta, Medifee yeah. area? Um, right off Scott and but uh, Scott or Bundy. I'm right in the middle between oh, the three. So not far off. I can't go too far. I've got too many girls around here. That's right. Um, so Lace, you are you coach now, right? You're coaching yeah, little girls. What are, the, what are the age ranges what are the age ranges typically oh. with you you lace i think my youngest my youngest would be eight years old and then my my oldest one is a junior in high school right now so i range from eight to high school when my lessons so and then what's your yeah, you, i think hey you said you're around, you're super young to some college girls, don't you? Don't you do some college girls as yeah, well? Yeah, some college girls, yeah. Not very many yet. I've got, my ones that have been with me from the beginning are like juniors now, so they'll be in college before we know it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, Lace, you have any, anything you want to ask uh, your old, your first, very first pitching coach? Yeah, I think my first one I said was um, if you can remember what like what our lessons were like or what sort of developments I made, uh, like strengths or weaknesses. But I know it was a long time ago. So just like oh, me as like a little, a little like rec ball playing pitcher. That was a long time ago. <laughs> um, I knew that you were really good and you were really young. And like I would, you know, I brag about you a lot. I, I have like videos and pictures from like your rec ball games and stuff and um i just remember like you know when i you coach so when you have a young girl and you're like this girl's gonna be a good pitcher 
So, I mean, I know I'm a stickler for mechanics, so I'm sure we were probably focusing on that the most. And then I remember it was funny. I watched one of your other shows and you talked about the change up and how I was like obsessed with that. And I was like, oh, that hasn't changed. It's like, yeah. Oh. One of my students, like, oh, lazy on her podcast. And I was supposed to change up even back then. But it's true. Even in college, it's important. So, yeah, I guess I just remember you stood out for sure. And I'm always bummed when a young girl, like, is so good. And then, of course, I wasn't really full-time coaching then. And you guys move on. I'm like, oh, they're going to be so good. I want them to be, like, my my student forever. <laughs> you know, people have to grow. Yeah. Like, I guess I, I kind of remember that. I mean, definitely remember the bullpens. That was why I coached there because I could use, I mean, I loved coaching there, but I uh, liked to use their facilities, you know, even though it wasn't the best, it was better than going to Cal Oaks, you know? Well, yeah, th 13 years ago, Kate, uh, we were not very good. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell, you can tell when a girl's no. Yeah, well, let, no, Le Lacey was pretty good, but the, the high school team was oh. absolutely horrible. I, we that may was... not have, we may not have won a game. I, I'm pretty sure that uh, we didn't win a game. <laughs> I, I was going to ask Lacey because you said one year girl, or you have girls that are up to like junior in, in high school. That was mm -hmm. hard for me coaching because we were so close in age. I was wondering if it, you know, for you is that. But I mean, you guys are really close in age—a junior in high school and a senior in your senior, right? Yeah. She's doing her tolling. Oh, you're a junior. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not, it's not hard. Um, it's, it's weird because my brother is a senior in high school. So I see them as like, kind of like little siblings. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. So like the junior in yeah. high school, she's younger than my, my little brother. So like, I still see them as like my student and my, and my lesson and like someone that, or I know that they look up to me in a sort of way. Um, and I think the closest in age kind of helps a little bit, like for like relatableness, um, mm -hmm. and like developing like a good relationship and like kind of fun and bantering back and forth, um, talking about high school and like, um, I mean, they could even come to my games still um, if they wanted to. So I've had some girls come to my games. Um, so I really just like having that close relationship with them. It's so crazy. But with like the eight-year-olds and hearing them when they were born, is just out of, I don't know. I don't, know. I don't you, like it. You feel like that a lot older than you. <laughs> it's really yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. When I, I think it was better for me because I coaching a team that was different. And one on one lessons as far as the age difference, that was hard for me. But now obviously I'm old. I feel like I hit a certain age where like some of these girls it's different. But good. I'm glad you yeah. guys I mean that then you can relate. Yeah. You you you're you're you just stuck with lessons, right? You never really coached like travel ball teams, right? Or did you try coach any travel ball teams and then after after high school, I always said, I will never coach another team. I did three years at Mesa. I'm sorry, those teenagers and the parents. It was so hard for me. But I have this girl that's 10. And when she was five or six, she started with me. And I promised her when she went to travel ball, I would coach her. Oh, okay. But I didn't think she was going to go to travel at nine years old. So, <laughs> so I, I have, they give me a hard time all the time. I just don't think I can do another team. It was so hard. Yeah, speaking of parents, right? Because you know, again, our our journey, just the podcast, like I said earlier, is, is is my journey as well as far as a parent and and how. I I mean, when Lacey cried at the kitchen table because I was not acting appropriate, right? And she finally said, "Dad, that's this is enough." Can you touch upon some? We I, I called the pet peeves earlier, but uh, what are some of your if we want to use today's terms, your ix of parents. And I don't want you, I don't want this to be like a, a you know, bash parents, you know. No, I will. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. No, go for it. But, um, but what are some like ics and like maybe sort of advice for someone who like me, who's not, you know, you know, Lacey's not hitting her spot. So I'm like moping and I, but I have really bad body language or I'm, I roll it back to her because, you know, if her change up, you know, wasn't, you know, she didn't hit her change up. So I just roll it back to her instead of throwing it back to her. What, what are some of your ex or some, maybe some advice? So I can think of a couple things. Um, 
Let's see if I can remember them. So one is like I had mentioned, like the magic lesson, which I'm sure Lacey can relate to coaching. Uh, some of these parents will bring their kids to like one lesson a week and their kids won't practice. And they're like, why is my kid not advancing? Obviously, you're not doing your job. I, I would be charging a lot more if there was a magic lesson. Or the parents that bring them like in rec ball, they'll bring them just when season starts and they'll try to cram and the kid hasn't done anything in months. Um, but then that's one of mine. Then there's another one. The kids need to be doing something every day. I mean, even if it's 20 minutes. So. But then the other one is the parents who tell me that their nine-year-old isn't begging them to practice, so they're not going to push their kid to go out. And I don't know about you guys, but there are some kids that are the 1% of kids that will beg their parents or they'll go out on their own, but a lot of kids won't. And my parents had to make me go out and practice. And I always tell them, as long as they're not complaining while they're out practicing, like, of course, when it was 100 degrees in July, I wanted to sit on my couch after school in the air conditioning. I didn't want to go practice, but my parents made me. So when these parents are like, my nine-year-old isn't begging me to practice, I try to remember, like remind them they're a kid, you know? Of course they want to do other things, but if you see potential in them, you need to push them. So they're like one extreme or the other. And then as far as like how you said, how you kind of acted, I have some parents that my mom was super tough, but it breaks my heart when I see like um, some kids scared to fail because their parents are so tough and you know as a coach Lacey like sometimes like I don't care where the ball goes just throw it like I'm working on something mechanically and the ball might hit the roof of the cage I don't care but they'll look at their parents like they're not allowed to do that and I have to be like you got to just let them fail but I I'm worried that some of those kids are going to be the ones that don't continue playing and they're so talented and I wish some parents would listen to me when I say like just back off a little bit but there's like one end of the spectrum to the other. Like there's two extremes to some of these parents. But I think like you, I mean, they all figure it out as they go. But take your kids out to practice. Uh, if you see potential, push them and let them fail. Those would be like my biggest, my advice for my ex. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it was important that she opened up, right? She went to mom first and said, hey, you know, dad is, you know, <laughs> I can't handle this, right? This, you know. Cause she wants to, she, she's competitive. I mean, she's more competitive than me. She's like her mom. She's competitive. And so she would always ask me to go out and, and again, that's why we call it catching you podcast. Cause I would always catch her. Um, but then there was this times where she's just like, this sucks. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Cause he's, you know, she would throw it over the fence right now that I, I, I dropped my head and I walked real slow and, you know, and, and she's like, I'm not doing it on purpose. Dad, <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, anything else? It was no. Go ahead. Yeah, I because yeah, I I do remember like going out and asking, and we'd be like, well, well, he had work, or he got back late from. um, I mean, at times you were still coaching basketball, so uh, you had late practice, and I'd just be waiting at home, like just with my glove in the living room, and I think I'm like kind of how you said. Coach Kate, now, like they want to be, they need to be begging to go out and perform. And then I ask some of my lessons, like after they come to my lesson and it's not going very well and they're getting all confused. Why am I doing so bad? And then I'm like, well, did you pitch during the week? And then they say, well, I did like last week, maybe one time with my, my dad. And I was like, okay. So, and then I asked like, do you want to continue to get better at pitching and continue working hard and being a, like I even asked some of like kind of in the middle like 12 year old 14s uh like do you want to play in college and then they say yes I want I want to play in college and like I love Stanford I love all these schools I'm like well you're gonna have to go there more than once a week you're going to have to do it it's like probably a requirement um so mm-hmm. yeah just bring me back to begging my dad to go do spins at least i always tell the girls like you get out what you put in you know if if you don't like it's more fun to be successful in a game than feeling you get out what you put in it's it's not like it's not rocket science i try to tell them you know it's really not yeah right um yeah there, there was uh i think a couple episodes ago that um 
I talked about a uh, uh, coach was saying that the nine year old, you know, I, I think you may have commented on it, uh, Coach Kate, you know, the nine year old was ca- crying after practice because she didn't know who to listen to. And can you like maybe describe that? Because I'm sure she's not the only one. I'm sure she, you know, when they start getting pitching coaches, it didn't happen with us because, uh, you know, our coach was cool. He was just like, okay, what are you guys working on? And he would always make fun of us because, Lacey, he thought he thought Lacey had too many, too many uh, grips or too many pitches. What, what did he say? He used to say, Coach Chris. He's like, "What is this grip number seventy two or something like that?" Yeah, because we were going, "Hey, we know we have this new grip for the curveball," and he's like, "He's like, just, just throw just the curveball like you." <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, it. it what about the, that nine-year-old, you know, cause she, again, she's not the only, what about that nine-year-old that's conflicted and, you know, cause g- girls shouldn't be crying after practices, you know, because like, they have to choose. Like if their coach is telling them one thing and their pitching coach. So yeah, I've yeah. Had that. that's hard because I mean, these kids just want to please their coaches and their parents. And, you know, to me, I'm always like, that's a red flag from a coach. My biggest thing is if you're paying for any type of lesson, your parents are working hard and paying and you're working hard practicing, then your coach should be in communication with your pitching or hitting or whatever coach and um, get on the same page. So we're saying the same thing. So we're not confusing the kids, but it's hard. I told my kids to like kind of smile and nod. Yeah, coach. And then know what I've told them and do what I've told them. But that's hard for a nine-year-old. Like, you know, I, that's a difficult situation. My, I always tell the parents, talk to the coach and some are more approachable than others. And I'm like, and tell them, uh, you know, give them my information, get in contact or I'll do it. But I'll tell my girls if their coach is telling them something that they know they're not supposed to do that we don't work on. I tell them to blame me. I say, tell them that you got in so much trouble and I made you run for 30 minutes. I said, put all the blame on me. That's okay. <laughs> like, I mean, it's so hard for these kids. They just want to do well, you know? Yeah. No, and then on that note, I think, Lacey, you had some that you wanted to ask her about. Maybe kind of we can segue into that, like keeping it fun, right? Uh, I think, Yeah. again, not ever going to go D1, right? Not ever, you know, because I'm sure Coach Kate in the, in the 13 years, you've had a lot of girls not play anymore. You've had a lot of girls fall out of love of it because of one reason or the other. Maybe it could have been, you know, harsh parents or it could have been that coach. Um, I don't know, Lace, what you, you asked me, so you, you kind of shared what you wanted to ask her about that. Yeah, I said, um, like for, cause you work with a lot of young girls, um, like how do, how do you, you as a coach, keep it simple and fun without putting too much pressure on them, but like also pushing them to be better. Mm-hmm. Like in lessons, I can tell, I just try to do some kind of a uh, challenging game or like you know the little one I'll add in running because they think running's fun for some reason when they're young That's, I try to remind them that it's you know to laugh I'll tell them a joke and have fun or I'll have them tell me a joke like it's supposed to be a good time it shouldn't be feel like a job especially it, I don't think it should ever I know when we get to college like my mom always said it, it's a job they're paying for your college it's a job but I mean come on it works more fun when you're having fun, you know? So I just try to keep it entertaining because I can tell when some of the kids are overthinking or just over it. So then we'll just do like pitch and spreads or the fast five. And they think that's a blast, even though it's a lot of hard work. But that's that's pretty much my go-to plan. Or sometimes I always have my stereo. I'll be like, all these kids love Taylor Swift. I'm not a Swifty, but... um I'll play some Taylor Swift for them and then they'll start singing and dancing and, and it's all good. They kind of forget and they just have a good time. Uh, so I'm sure most of the dads, I, I'm sure there are some moms out there caught, you know, I think Emily stopped catching when you were in and lace, but you know, she got hit, hit in the knee a couple of times, but, um, you know, cause I, I described, you know, my body language when she would miss a spy, I would even have bad, bad body language, you know, during her lessons. <laughs> You know, I'd be like, you know, shaking my head and, and doing stuff like that. Do you have like card set rules on parents? Like, or. Mm. I wish I did. <laughs> I, 
but I try. It's hard because, you know, at the same time, I'm still running a business, but right. like, it's a really hard situation. I try to have talks with parents, but it's usually the dads. The moms, like my mom would tough. Moms can be tough, but it's usually the dads and the girls never want to disappoint their their dad and I'll like mention things and I always get the like, yeah 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 you know and then the next lesson they're doing the same thing again and I just see their kid like holding in tears and I I feel like a lot of times it goes in one ear out the other I'm gonna have to, I want to get more strict with that but like I said I'm a, it's a fine line you know yeah it's hard to find catchers right that are just willing to catch bullpen right they typically yeah. catch Catchers like, just want to catch games, you know. <laughs> they don't, they're not big fans of catching bullpens. And I do sometimes. I have catchers come, but some of these parents, like, um, it's it's interesting. They like don't want anyone else to catch their kid because they want to give their kid the luck, you know. I learned a lot from these parents for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the reason why we're doing this, right? Is is we want the we want these we want more girls to enjoy the game and not fall out of love of it right and and, you know you said there's a fine line all right and you know what is that line we have it's it's pretty gray we don't know (laughs) right wow um so yeah uh, pretty cool stuff i know you got to get going here um we got about uh, you have lessons right you have your full-time uh business going on you got to get you got to get going here and get prepared Mm -hmm. um if somebody um that's listening, wants to reach out to you and maybe ask you a question, maybe personally, um, how, what's the best way to, to reach out to you? And then I have, I have a couple of questions uh, at the end here. Okay. So just, um, probably Instagram DM it's three sixty softball, but I, you spell out the three and then it's the number 60. Sometimes people get confused. Right. Uh, so it's T H T H R E E. Yeah, and then yeah. Also, three sixty softball dot com. I have like a contact form. They can send me anything on there, and it'll go shoot straight to my uh, email. But um, yeah, I mean Instagram, I'm on there the most, and then the the website and email probably second. All my information's on there, phone number and everything too. Right. Okay. Um, and then I asked you, kind of off camera. And I, I, I really appreciated this one because not many people would say what you said. And I asked you, who is the most in- influential person in your life and how did they impact you? So can you kind of let's maybe end on that? Because I, I think that's pretty cool that <laughs> what you said. Over there. I said my grandpa, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my grandpa. So um, he's not around anymore, but he... So he grew up playing men's fast pitch. Him and his, he was a catcher. Him and his pitcher were in like the Hall of Fame for men's fast pitch. No my whole family, my mom played softball, so everyone was in it. But I was actually a catcher and a third baseman. And we were messing around. They had land in San Diego and we're playing. And, you know, like every kid pitched the ball. And my grandpa's like, nope. He's like, you're, you're going to be a pitcher. We're not doing this anymore. I apparently threw really fast. And he, so he like completely changed. I'm not even sure. I mean, it was pretty good, but I wasn't like as good as I got with pitching. So I don't think I'd be where I am today if he didn't decide I was going to be a pitcher when I was actually not till 12 years old is when I started. Oh, wow. So, really? Yeah. yeah. So I was a catcher third baseman until I was 12. And then it, things moved really fast. I met Bill, Wendy's dad, like shortly after and jumped into travel ball. And but it was all because of my grandpa and he used to just take me out and he used to take me to the VFW and we'd go to the, the fields over there and, and pitch. And he went to all of my games. He like randomly started calling me like, he's like, can your nickname be right before he passed away? He's like, and I was 16 around there. And he's like, can you, can I call you Peaches? And I was like, that's really weird. And within six months, I got a full ride to Georgia. And I was like, Georgia Peach. It's oh my gosh. Really weird things. But I would definitely not, not be where I am now if it wasn't for Her. grandpa in the backyard yeah that's awesome what what what's his what was his name uh dick jones <laughs> richard dick, jones richard jones yeah what what was your what was your did you call him papa what'd you call him it's grandpa, grandpa? i have my only grandparents around here my other ones were in southern illinois so yep just, but, yeah cool. 
Um, awesome. And then the last thing is we, I, I asked you about, cause we, we uh, Lace and I, and our family, we have family core values, right? Yes. Um, so I kind of asked you a little bit, maybe like, uh, character traits, you know, someone that you, you look at someone and you're like, okay, that's, that's, you know, well, so what kind of character traits or kind of core values are you looking at for people? Typically? Uh, definitely honesty. That's huge. And hardworking character traits. I mean, that's in not just softball and life, being a hard worker and dedicated to what you love. And, um, those are probably some of the, I don't remember what else I answered. <laughs> Uh, consistency, hard working, and honesty, right? And yeah, I think consistency, they, like, consistency is huge. That's consistency is a big one in anything. Yep. Well, good stuff. I appreciate it, Coach Kate. Thank you for coming on, being our first guest. This is awesome. Um, to our Catching You podcast. Um, also, so they we got your uh, info. If people want to reach out to you, I appreciate your time. I know you got to get out of here. Uh, Lace, thanks for hopping on. Uh, Lace, I love you. Coach Kate, I love you too. I love, I love that you are her first ever pitching coach. Right, I brag about it though. (laughs) Hopefully, they maybe catch a a good nugget or two out of it. Take care, guys. Thank you.